What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. It's coming to bring y'all part two to uh, Bitter Herbs. Um, first and foremost, let's give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And let's give all praises to you, lost sheep of the house of Israel and mankind who fears God. Um, bitter Herbs. Um, it's a lot of things that our people are doing that are um, at this point now during these times. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna continue to cause affliction and be a vexation to you. Um, NBA, NFL, chasing money. Um, again, I mentioned the schools. Um, I made videos about it. Education, um, converting, be thou converted. Just a bunch of different, vid different videos. Talk about the two thirds. Um, Amos. I touched on it lightly, but I'm gonna really get into it in this video. Um, you're gonna have to make a decision in your life. You're either hot or cold. There is no in-between with the Heavenly Father. You can't, you cannot worship God and mammon. You got to make a decision. Which one is it going to be? You're going to deal with the carnality of this world, hoping that things will be okay. It's not going to work for you because the time is going to run out and he's going to start spilling this flood out. Um, our people don't want to listen. They're stubborn. I'm talking about so-called blacks, native Indian, indigenous Indians, Hispanics, uh, Negro, native indigenous descent by the house of your fathers. Um, they just don't want to listen. And so, you know, brothers like myself, we've been brought here to wake you up, to make you consider. Um, you got to start really thinking about this. You got to start considering where you at and what's really happening with you. It doesn't take long for one to say, you know what? <laughs> this place was never made for you. And that's what the Lord is trying to tell you. It's not your heaven. But anyway, man, let's get into this. This is part two again. If you're starting it on part two, uh, please stop if you haven't seen part one and go look for Bitter Herbs part one. Um, yeah, man, Bitter Herbs. Let's get it. Ezekiel chapter three, verses one through 27. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest. That's right. Eat what you find, son of man. Right? Eat what thou find. What did Jeremiah said? I have found thy word, and I have eaten it. That's right. This is how you get this understanding to teach your people to warn them from death. Right? Let's read. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he calls me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. That's right. It, 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 it tastes good, but it's got a bitter taste to it. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. My words. That's right. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words that thou canst not understand, surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. That's right. That's right. Our people are impudent. Um, they, they love disobedience. Um, they're hard-hearted. They don't have any faith. Right? Um, they don't like showing due respect. Uh, impertinent in a sense. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't really like uh, showing respect to anybody. That's Israel. Let's read. Behold, I've made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead, fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Right. Don't be afraid of your people. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart. Believe these words from his roll. And hear with thine ears, hear these words that are being spoken to you. And go get thee to them of the captivity 
unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. That's right. You have a choice. You're either hot or cold. So I don't understand these endless debates that y'all have with people who don't agree with you. They either hear it or they don't. They either accept it or reject it. That's right. Uh, they're going to have their own thought or they're going to have the Lord's thought. They don't have the Lord's thought because they don't have the water. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard, I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness and the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the, of the captivity of Tel Abib that dwelt by the river of Chabar, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's right, because this word is from heaven. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. That's right. How, you, how, how are you going to warn your brother from sin if you don't got the word from your Lord? If you don't eat what you find? Let's read. Anyone else telling you to stop going to schools and to convert? To walk away? No. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. That's right. See, you the Israelites can be wicked also. Sin is wickedness. Transgressing the commandment is wickedness. That's right. It's like the spirit of witchcraft, man. You got an idol in your mind that makes you not want to listen. So it's not your Lord. Again, when a righteous man do turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. What stumbling block is he laying before you Israelites? We're going to get into that. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Right. So if you're an Israelite and you're keeping the commandments, but you still want to keep drinking the wine of your oppressor, that's sin. You can die in your sin. Even though you've been righteous. There's no, there's no two sides, hot or cold. Let's read. There's no in between. You're either an Israelite or you're not. Let's keep going. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. No one's out here warning you of this. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. That's right, I think I've warned you a couple times now about these, these places. That's right. Eat that roll that thou findest in your heart. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will talk, and, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Chabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them. 
and thou shalt not go out among them, right? He pulls the elect away. And I'll make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Right? You hear it, you consider, you turn, good for you. The rest of them, they're going to fall by the sword. That's right. Proverbs chapter 20. Because your people love the wine of your oppressor. Verses 1 through 30. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Right? Wine, you know, when your people are under the wine, they mock the word of God. Strong drink is raging. They're, they love the strong drink of the enemy. So they rage against us because of this truth. Let's read. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise, right? You're deceived by the wine of your oppressor. You're not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoke with him to anger, sinneth against his own soul. Provoke the king who is the lion. It's not wise for you to do so. You're sinning against your own soul. It is an honor for a man to see from, cease from strife. But every fool will be meddling, right? It's, it's an honor for our people to cease from the strife here. But you keep meddling. Every fool will keep meddling. You still want to be a part of it. You you get vexation, you get vexed here constantly, but you still want to meddle with it. You're a fool. Let's read. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg and harvest. And have nothing, right? The sluggard will not plow. He won't labor at this word. Oh, it's cold. You know, I don't want to do it today. You're going to beg and harvest and you ain't going to have nothing. The harvest of the Lord. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares of our people. Those who have the knowledge and those who don't. Those who don't, who have deceived you, they're going to be burned in the fire. Let's read. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim every one his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find, right? The Lord's saying, how can you find a faithful man? How are you going to find an Ezekiel? They got to eat the roll that the Lord gives them. Let's read. Not by, they don't base their role off of uh, what Esau has said concerning the role. The Lord is in control of all this. He puts his secrets where he wants to put them. You don't have any faith, so you don't just read. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Right. A man, you see, that's why they remove the man from the house. A just man, a man of the Lord who understands the word of his heavenly father, who has this deep water, his children are blessed because they're going to stand up to the enemies in the gate. Because he's teaching them. They fear God. They are blessed because he keeps his integrity. His children won't be sell-offs. Let's read. They're blessed for it. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment. Right. Our men, you should be, you should have the thought of your Lord like a king. Scattering evil away with your eyes. That's the problem. There's no judgment in our communities either. We're going to get into that. It's going to happen to these idle Israelites out here. These wicked of our people, the gangbangers, the pimps, the drug dealers, all these rappers. The Lord's showing you the targets by knocking them off. You, the, the true house of Israel is going to have to rise up against them. Let's read. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who can say that? Only the men who have the doctrine from the beginning. The true baptism. Let's read. Diverse weights and diverse measures. Both of them are like abomination to the Lord. Right. There's not an imbalance with the Lord. You're either with him or you're not. See, this kingdom is all unjust. It's divers weight and measures. Babylon. The Lord is you either hot or cold. You either do what I say or you don't. There's no in between. No in between. He's given commandments from the beginning to keep a person from sin. 
You don't listen to the men who have it, who are teaching you. You are committing iniquity. Let's read. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure or whether it be right. Right. You, you, you got a man killing someone on camera here, but you, you need eight years to decide if he's guilty or not. They don't nod the bones till tomorrow. Wickedness. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. That's right. Open your eyes, man. Come get this bread. Open your eyes. Quit being carnal. You'll be satisfied with bread. You'll be satisfied with what the Lord has comforted us with. But you don't want to open your eyes. You still want to have one foot meddling with Esau. It is not, it is not, say at the buyer. Right. <laughs> they don't believe this truth, man. It is not, it is not. Nah, that, you know, that ain't scripture, man. I'm not trying to hear that. You off, huh? Right. But when he has gone away, his way, then he boasteth. That's right. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. That's right. Never trust the surety for a stranger, someone who's sure of someone who's strange against their God. Right. And a surety for someone who's under that strange woman's spirit. Let's read. Take a pledge of him. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. That's right. You're going you're gonna, to uh, catch the sword. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. Right. Good advice is from the heavenly, on the heavenly Father. Only God is good, and his advice is part of this flood, this baptism. So you need to understand when and how you make war. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You curse the heavenly father who is the father and mother in heaven, your lamp is going to be put out. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Right. A lot of athletes, rappers, you're getting the riches when you're young and then they end up dead. Lord is against that. You don't have any knowledge. Let's keep reading. Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? It is a snare to a man who devoureth that which is holy. And after vows to make inquiry, right, he devoured the Israelites, the precious jewels of the Heavenly Father, and now they inquire like they're holy. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the will over them. Bringeth the wheel over them. How do we learn about the wheel? What is the wheel? Uh, it's in Adam and Eve. Let's read. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. The glory of young men, <clears throat> the glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. That's right. Don't deal with your people who are under that wine. Is this a mocker? They want to keep getting the wine and the oil of their oppressor. Right, they're not considering what's going on with them, bitter herbs. So the Lord brings punishment upon them. Let's read Proverbs chapter 21, verses 12 through 16. Excuse me, 12 through 22. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. Wisely considers the house of the wicked. You're in a house that you don't belong in. This is in your home, right? But God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. 
Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Right? You, you stop hearing the poor man's cries, these warnings, like Lazarus, you stop hearing the poor man, you're going to cry yourself, and you're not going to be heard. That's right. You reject the word of the Heavenly Father, you're going to cry yourself. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, right? A gift, they give you a secret, they killed your son, and they give you a couple million dollars for it. Pacifieth, to pacify your anger. And a reward in the bosom, strong wrath, right? You've been locked up in prison for 50 years and you were innocent. They give you money. So you don't bring forth any wrath. You, you Israelites bow down for money. And you, you sell your integrity and righteousness for money. It is a joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. That's right. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's right. Our people, you wander out of understanding, you're in the congregation of the dead. That's right. He's punishing you. You don't want to deal with the word of the Lord. The Lord is starting to squeeze these vice grips. Food's going up, housing's going up, famine is coming, the dollar isn't worth anything. The Lord's going to squeeze you. He's, he's going to, you think those shootings were light? Those were light, excuse me. What's coming is going to be a thousand times worse. When this famine starts kicking in, all bets are off. Let's read. The only thing that can protect you is this word, being under this armor. Let's go to Ecclesiastes real quick, Sirach chapter 15, and then we'll go back. Yeah, congregation of the chapter 15. There's no one between. You got a choice. Praise is not seemly in the mouth of a sinner, for it was not sent him of the Lord. For praise shall be uttered in wisdom. And the Lord will prosper. The Lord is who prospers this word with you. Not a man. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hateth. Say not thou, he hath caused me to err. For he hath no need of the sinful man. The Lord hateth all abomination. And they that fear God love it not. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. Right. Man was made by the heavenly father, you Israelites. So you are the only counsel you're supposed to be dealing with is the word of your God. That's it. Nothing else. Let's read. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness. He has set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. Right. You're either going to choose the fire or you're going to choose the water of your Lord. A lot of your people love the fire of this kingdom. They don't realize it's cursed. Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. Right. You like death. That's what's going to be given to you. You keep choosing the fire. You keep choosing the wine and the oil of your oppressor. Life and death. For the wisdom of the Lord is great, and he is mighty in power, and beholdeth all things. All his eyes are upon them that fear him, and he knoweth every work of man. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. That's right. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 21. We were on verse 16. Let's go to verse 17. That's right. Fire and water. That's right. He's giving you fire and water, right? Which one are you going to choose? Fire or water? Which one you want? He's giving you an option. Everything is according to the Heavenly Father's time. You don't know when this stuff's going to kick off. We just pay attention to the signs. It's definitely starting. It's been starting, but it's getting more aggressive. Let's read. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Right? You love the pleasure of the world. You're going to be poor. You're not going to have the riches of the Heavenly Father. 
He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Right. You like you like the wine of the serpent. Right. You like the wine of the serpent. You love his oil. His words are smooth as oil. You, lo you love everything they say to you. It keeps you following those stones. Right. You keep listening to him. Keep listening to him. Smooth as oil. Right. Let's keep, let's keep reading. You're not going to be rich. You're not going to have the riches of your Lord. You're going to beg and harvest and have nothing. You're going to shed a lot of tears. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with the contentious and an angry woman. Right? Who's contentious? That woman spirit. The Lord saying it's better for you to live in the, in the wilderness than to deal with this contentious woman who's vexing you all the time. That's that woman's spirit, the whore that rides the beast. Lord, is, there's nothing in this book that says the Israelites should be staying in their kingdom. Nothing. Not, not a drop. That says they should keep tolerating dealing with the people who vex them. No, it's directly different from that. It's you should be turning away from it, judging your people around you who are Israelites. Then I will be with you to take down those who vex you. Show you. Let's keep reading. Bitter herbs. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, right? The oil of the Lord in the dwelling of the wise, the real treasure. This is treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise. Let's read. But your other people, they don't believe in this treasure. Let's read. But a foolish man spendeth it up. That's right. He that followeth up the righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Right. He's going to give the wise men power. Right. You, you, he's going to give them power. They've been wise. They've been faithful. He's going to give them power to scale the city. You're going to over, they're going to overcome the enemy. Let's get it. They're selling out nonsense due to talents, money, raps, whatever. Let's get into this now. That's right. The Lord is not with that. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Right? You need to be considering the house of the wicked. And when you're sitting with the ruler, you need to be considering diligently what is before you. And put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Right? You put a knife to your throat if you're sitting with the ruler. Let's keep reading. If you like appetite, you want you want everything they got. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Right? Don't be desirous of the things they have here. It's deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. That's right. Yeah, I just want to get your son. I think he's a great athlete. I want to bring him to our college to get a degree. Right. Put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. The Lord is warning you. <laughs> He's you're being warned. Right. That's our people. You sell out these talents, these gifts you have. I'm going to get into that. Let's read bitter herbs. You're not supposed to do these things. Well, thou set thine eyes upon that which is not because it's a cursed land. It's going to fade away. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. That's right. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Right. They didn't want you in their schools. Remember that? When they used to try to keep you out of school? They didn't want you there. They have an evil eye towards you. Why do you keep going and running to be a part of it? Let's read. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. Right. Don't desire your oppressor who has an evil eye's meat. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Right? He tells you, oh, come on in now. Eat and drink. Study. Get a college degree. If you're a man given appetite, put a knife to your throat. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. That's right. That's right. 
Ezekiel chapter 20. That's right. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Are ye come to inquire of me as I live, saith the Lord God? I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Right, the abominations of your fathers. Judge your people. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, into a land that I espied for them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. That's right. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he should even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments, and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hollow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. Because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes went after their father's idols. That's right, you like falsehood. Wherefore, I gave them statutes that were not good. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, right? You got that stumbling block, you got that killer crossover, you're a great wide receiver, you got that rap skill, you can sing. He's polluted you in your own gifts. Stumbling block. And that they cause to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, right? You send all your kids and your sons to their schools to use those gifts, and you think it's a blessing. That I might make them desolate, so now he can punish you. 
to the end that they may know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name whereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? That's right. And commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, and when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And I shall be inquired of you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. It's going to punish you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As I lay, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. You keep worshiping the heathen's way with your polluted gifts, it's going to destroy you. How many athletes do you see lose their lives? NBA players, football players. Let's read. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. <coughs> fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. As I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness in the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. You're going to get beat with the rod of this word. And I'll bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And as for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye, serve ye, every one his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not return unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will, accept, I, will, I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered. And I will, I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein you have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that you have committed. That's right. You're going to loathe yourselves. The Lord has polluted you with your own gifts. He's put a stumbling block before you because you reject the word of God. You don't have this knowledge. So he can destroy you. He's warned you. And he's woke men like me up to warn you about this. The Lord's not dealing with sellouts and accepting consolation prizes. That's going to be Bitter Herbs Part 2. Um, be on the lookout for Part 2. Well, excuse me, Part 3. I must give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and all praises to you, lost sheep of the house of Israel, and mankind who fears God. Shalom.